So welcome to this small video of SMOD. I will just try to do some basic motion design example, just to review some techniques that we can use. So now I'm using the 8.3 version of SMOD. Sorry for uh, in advance for my English accent and uh, also for the bad quality of my microphone, but you can turn off the volume if you want. So let's start to create a composition that I will call this folder. Create a fit. First thing we will going to do is one by one, so the geometry will be easier to calculate and change the resolution of these compositions. Uh, because right now this composition has an inherited uh, resolution, which is HD, the same resolution as the uh, main composition. So I can change it back to custom. And let's take All right. Now you see an issue, these things. So let's say that the composition is using a camera with a wrong aspect ratio. You see that there, that there is no camera inside my composition, but it comes from the fact that SMOD is always using a default camera just to in order to display these uh, geometries. So what I'm going to do is just create a new camera and it will solve the issue. Then I will change it from perspective to orthographic and shift it to 45 degrees like that. Okay, seems fine. And now I will use a repeat modifier over my box. So it's in operator, repeat, and repeat it like 10 times. So now you see no differences because right now my repeated geometries are not shifted in position. They are all in the same space. So I'm going to shift them up. Okay. And Eight meters should be fine. And put all that down like that. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I just want to have a little repeated animation that goes downward or upward. And to do that, what I will use is a little trick using the 3D transform uh, because I could animate my camera using a animation loop over the position of my camera or the position of my box, but it can be a pain in the ass to set off, set uh, after. So I will call that we hit tool anim. So what I am going to do with this 3D transform is to shift it by 1.5 meters like that. You see no differences and that's natural because Right now, my repeat my 3D transform modifier. This one, if I move it a little bit, you see what that does. If I put its effect from zero to 100%, then it will move my geometries uh, 1.5 meters. And right now, if I do a linear loop over the percentage of my repeat tool, then the intensity of my repeat uh, of my 3D transform modifier will go from 0 to 100% in uh, 3 seconds. And so the geometry will go 1.5 meter up in this during these 3 seconds. And if I go in the 3D space, then you can see what is currently happening. The 3D transform shifts all the geometry 1.5 meters and then go back to the, its original position. And let's change a little bit the animation from linear to sinus inside the uh, tool parameters. And now we have a kind of is in, is out in the animations. Now, what I'm going to do is to use this composition right here and to add a renderer to this composition. So with Control Shift A, Control Shift A, and now I have two instances of my of my composition. So I will focus on the first one for a start. Let's go it up 
this one down and I will scale it from 100% to 500% like that so it takes all the space and I can do the same for the down button. and then I will use uh, two different modifiers you know the two different modifiers will allow me to downscale the to downscale the um, composition but using a wrap mode which is a repeat wrap mode so I scaled up my composition by um, five times so I will downscale it by five times also so 20 percent and now with the repeat so we have this nice uh, geometry here this nice repetition I will do the same for the down so I hold control while selecting the repeat and this will allow me to repeat uh, to duplicate this modifier with all its parameters display the down again and put the repeat a little bit of like that and with a vertical flip it changes a little bit the zoom of my autographic camera so we fit all the space let's call that motion test one okay and now i have um, first stuff done here so now i will change a little bit the color of my boxes i can use a lot of stuff to do that like um, triton modifier uh, triton color modifier but i will as i have a 3d geometry i will i will use 3d heights so direction light like a blue one for instance all right and let's put no shadows in my composition and a second direction of light and change a little bit its oriented orientations so now you see this reflection here i don't want that in my composition and it's inside the renderer uh, renderer component uh, of the box, so I go into the surface renderer and delete the speaker and so get rid of these reflections. Well, let's keep it that way for the moment and use a little background. Let's use a linear gradient. use more or less the same colors all right and then after we do that we can also uh, change the color afterwards using i don't know like u saturation luminance if it's not good for us well just to finish uh, with this example, I will show um, a modifier which is a kaleidoscope. And by default, the kaleidoscope does not uh, do something exceptional. To illustrate it, I will use a noise. All right, it just do some kind of tiling stuff or something like that. Let's go into its parameter and change the scale a little bit to see what's happening. So you see the kaleidoscope does nothing more than that, but it's very fun to use combined, um, for instance, with a, with a 2D transform modifier. So I will add a distort 2D transform modifier. And if I change the rotation, you see what's happening. So I will put the rotation before the kaleidoscope. And then we can start to have some nice stuff and by duplicating uh, the 2d transform and adding 2d transform and kaleidoscope over and over and over we can go to some nice uh, nice geometries 
So let's keep it that way for the moment. And now we have a nice placeholder here. For instance, if in my surface, instead of having a white uniform, I want to have a video input. And then here you can see my face uh, repeating over all of the cubes. And to get rid of the lighting I previously made, I can turn the auto animation up to 100%. Of course, this video input layer file uh, work because I previously configured it into the preferences, video input, and here by adding my webcam as a video input. So let's put that back into a normal uh, uniform here and a white uniform and put back the auto illuminate down to 0%. Another thing uh, that it uh, is fun to do with the 2D transform modifier, let's use an another one. So to activate and deactivate many modifier at the same time, I use a spacebar. It's very uh, convenient to, to, to use. So let's use another 2D transform modifier. All right. What I'm going to do with this one is just move its position a little bit to the left. And over it, I will use a, a linear function mask. So mask, function mask, linear function mask. And what it does uh, right now is create over my 2D transform modifier a linear mask driven by a function. In this case, a linear ramp. What does that mean is that my 2D transform here is at 100% intensity like that and at 0% intensity intensity like that. And what does my linear mask here is just uh, doing that in this position of my mask, the effect is not applied. And in this position of my linear mask, the effect is applied at 100%. So if I change with the edit mode by linear mask, you see what's happening. So what I'm going to do is just change this function from <coughs> a linear ramp to a sinus. Let's see, we can repeat it. Change a little bit the position of the 2D transform. And so you can also do some nice stuff uh, like that using the function mask. Let's see. Okay. Now you see that behind this limit, my mask has no longer any effect. So you can also well, use that the way you want. And this uh, can be. The sinus function can be modified here, like, well, any. So I hope you've enjoyed this small tutorial. I hope it could have been useful to you. And well, see you another time.